Hey y'all, this is Shane. I'm here to talk about setting up a DAW for the first time, Digital Audio Workstation. And this is aimed at people who are just getting into it and not sure really where to start or what to buy. There's so much stuff out there right now and uh, I'm here to talk about some of my experiences and what I would recommend to get a job done. If you're say a solo artist and you just record a bit of an acoustic guitar or electric guitar and vocals or you want to layer up stuff on your own, a two-channel interface would probably be okay. Now there's a whole bunch of different types of these. You can go from Mbox, which I don't personally use or like because you're kind of locked to Pro Tools. To, to my knowledge, you do get a light version of Pro Tools, but what I would do is go buy some good software, um, such as you know Cubase, Nuendo, Adobe Audition 3, Sony Vegas 11, or something like that, or any of the Sony sweets I really like those and um, go buy a piece of hardware that will kind of give you more options to use with different software. A great place to start is a Line 6 UX2. It's a two channel interface and it's got two mic pre's and it also has a guitar line in and it works with bass as well. It's great. The preamps are quite good for what you're getting. It comes with a whole bunch of um, effects so if you say you don't want to record a, my uh, mic up an amplifier you can plug in and choose an amp it doesn't sound as good but it's quite good still and it's good for kind of filling out tracks rather than making making them prominent or it's cool because if you've recorded a really nice guitar track and you want to put some trim on you can just select the tremolo pedal and you're away so that's pretty cool and next you probably want to buy a microphone I'd probably choose one that you could do more than one thing for. If you buy an SM57, it's probably going to be good in front of a loud guitar amp, but it's not really going to do your vocals any justice. So I'd probably prefer, prefer buying one good condenser mic, like a Rode NT3. That's a good all-purpose microphone. It can do everything from instruments to drums to, to guitar amps to vocals to live performance as well. If you really want a superior microphone, they're the way to go. The Rode M3s, as I've mentioned, I'm using them a lot more now, and they're great. Um, there's plenty of options. You could even just get like a Shure Beta 58 or something like that. It will be okay. I won't give you the greatest recorded vocal sounds in the world, but it'll be all right. Another option is you could go for one of these, which is like a USB-powered microphone. These are by Blue. This is called a Yeti. Now, pros and cons of this is this is an interface. It actually has a USB cable, headphone jack on the bottom, mic patterns on the back as well as um, level and a volume and a mute button on the front so it essentially does the same sort of thing. Now if you're just playing acoustic you probably get away with something like this. The results with these are good. Uh, for voiceover they're great, like voiceovers these are awesome but um, they're a little funny when it comes to acoustic guitar. I don't know if they've actually got a de-esser built into the sound or a roll-off on certain frequencies because you don't need to add de-esser when you do vocals to these or when you do a voiceover. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really think buying a, a USB mic for that kind of application is really good. I'd be more inclined to buy an interface and one good mic if you're going to take that path. Get like a nice Rode mic or any brand that you, that you choose to enjoy. So. There's so many different microphones out there. Just do a little research. If you can test them, test them. If not, just go for one that you know is going to do the job. A Rode NT1 is a great microphone. It does. It's fairly inexpensive and it's great. Next thing you want to take into consideration is cables. Cables make quite a bit of difference to the signal. I'd always prefer buying a decent one, just one or two good cables. There's plenty of brands out there, just don't go buying like a $5 one because what will happen is if the cable moves around on the ground, it will, may actually make noise through the mic and you don't want that. So get a good quality mic lead and uh, it will definitely make a difference. In terms of monitors or speakers or headphones, this is where you can spend some big bucks and what I'd probably do if you're just starting out and you're not really sure if you're going to continue to make music, just buy a set of Behringer ones. Like, don't get the smallest ones, they're not very good, but get a, get a pair of those Truth ones, because they're fairly inexpensive and they'll do the job. Like, you may have to EQ a little bit here and there but to get the right sound back from them, but 
they'll do the job. I bought a set of KRK System Rocket 8s and they've been great. I've had them for about four years now. Uh, but they were expensive, they've come down a lot in price and you can get a, a set of those too. You'll see them around all the time, they're these ones here. So yeah, check them out, they definitely will do the trick. And with headphones too, you can spend unlimited amounts of money on headphones, but if you've got a good set of monitors, the headphones aren't as important. They're mainly for playback when you're, say, singing over something you've already recorded so you don't get spill going back through the mic. So make sure they're over-ear ones and they block out a bit of sound. You know, like if they're on, people around you can't hear. Uh, and that will make sure that you get the best isolated sound when you're recording. So there's some things to think about. If you're going to do multi-track, you'd go for something like a Motu 8 Pre. And that's what I use, there's Presonus Fire Studio as well. And Line 6 make a UX8 model, which is a USB interface. The problem with Firewire now is a lot of laptops don't have it. They've kind of, it's become obsolete. I hear they or they've actually made a new Firewire that's come out, but the push is definitely towards USB 3 and beyond, I guess now. So you won't probably find a lot of laptops with Firewire ports and there's no real way to add them on on some models you can on others but not on all so take that into consideration if you're using a desktop it makes it easy you can go get a Firewire card or well, most of the motherboards actually have them built in so I'll do that and in terms of lots of tracks the only thing I can recommend is making sure you have a big screen or something at least 22 inches or two smaller ones that will definitely also work it's good to have your workload spread out across two screens and that will definitely give you an advantage when mixing you can have faders in one area, multi-tracking, recording section in another, or however you want to lay it out. There's no real wrong way of doing it. So keep that in mind and always remember whatever you're recording, it should always sound good before you hit record. So just keep that in mind. You'll get great results even in a bedroom recording if you've got a good sound to start with. So I hope that's helped. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Cheers all. Thanks.